You know what? This film was a welcome breath of fresh air, and I really appreciate Netflix for making it. Let's get into it. Space Sweepers, 2021. This film was directed by Joe Sung Hee. Set in the year 2092, Earth has become nearly uninhabitable. Fleeing the sick Earth, the UTS Corporation builds a new orbiting home for humanity, but only a chosen few can ascend. The plot itself follows a crew of the space junk collector ship called the Victory, which strangely enough I think was the original title of this film, but don't quote me on that. But their lives take a huge turn when they discover a humanoid child robot named Dorothy that's known to be a weapon of mass destruction. This film gave me Elysium meets Cowboy Bebop vibe. Elysium, you know, because of all the the classism, you know, the levels and the layers to it. And Cowboy Bebop because Cowboy Bebop. I mean, if you haven't seen Cowboy Bebop after this video, go watch Cowboy Bebop. It's pretty much guys riding around space with a broken down jalopy of a spaceship and they're doing what they gotta do to get cash to fix the spaceship, Cowboy Bebop. So that's how I get the vibes of that film in comparison with this film because these guys are broke in this film. It's they start off doing odd jobs for money and in the first job they do, they end up more in debt <laughs> than when they started, which definitely gives me Cowboy Bebop vibes. Overall, I gotta say, I really enjoyed this film. It surprised the mess out of me because I definitely went into it with those blinders on, like, hey, I'm just getting ready to go in there and watch a laid back sci-fi flick, which is one of my favorite genres, by the way. I was just ready to go in pretty much with my brain turned off, ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy a film. And this film really grabbed me and took me on the ride. I don't get many of the reviews that I've been seeing, which are, are negative, mostly from people who aren't fans of the sci-fi genre, I think, to begin with, much less throwing the elements that it's Korean sci-fi film. I really appreciate that this film took the time to flesh out its characters. In the beginning, it started off kind of fast-paced and action-packed, which, don't get me wrong, it pretty much keeps a nice tone of <laughs> throughout the film. But around, I want to say, not even the second half of the movie, a little bit, about maybe a... 40 minutes into it, we really started to get a feel for who the characters were. We got a lot of good backstories and a lot of rich development in characters. So the movie really centers around the victory and his crew. Uh, the crew consists of mainly four characters, which are Taho, who is like a fallen from grace type character. He's uh, pretty much on the search for his daughter and by any means necessary, willing to do what it takes to find her. You also have the character of Captain Jang, I believe I'm pronouncing it right, who is... <laughs> Like a stereotypical alcoholic, bad, foul mouth captain. So next you have what I consider to be like my favorite character. I think it's my favorite character. I'm just realizing now that he might be my favorite character. Mr. Park, a.k.a. Tiger Park, who's like an ex-mob boss. And he's just like this tough guy with a solid exterior. And he's a, a pretty much a brute, no-nonsense kind of guy. But then the, his dynamic totally changes when he meets another character. And it's, it's like he takes on a whole different persona. And then you have a character who's simply known as Robot. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's going to be everybody's favorite character. I mean, I thought he was my favorite character so I really started to digest and think about Mr. Park as a character. The Robot character is... The Robot character is pretty much a savage. I think they really did a great job portraying the robot skills and abilities and really giving him character. He had the second most amount of character out of everybody on that crew. He was witty, slick tongue, comical at times when he needed to be. All in all, he was a pretty solid character. So they find this humanoid robot, Dorothy. And once they find Dorothy, things pretty much take a turn. The whole movie gets flipped on its axis, so to speak. But that's when we really start to get into it and really pick up the pace and really get a good feel for what's going on in it. What I will say about this movie is I very much enjoyed it. I mean, it's been a while since we had a good sci-fi movie, I think, you know. I'm trying to remember the last one I saw in the last year or two, and nothing's really coming to mind. I mean, of course you have your Star Wars, but that's over the top so much that it's kind of convoluted, and we're not going to be ready to talk about Star Wars because, you know. Yeah. This was a really welcome breath of fresh air when I think about it. Uh, a, a breath of fresh air that I didn't see coming. I got to say that when I was watching this movie, I was watching it in my theater setup, and I was blown away by the sound quality of this movie. Usually on a Netflix film, they, they advertise the surround sound or the Atmos in the 
in the description, but sometimes, most times, they really fail to deliver that impact from the start. This movie was boom, boom, bang, bang. And it was just, okay, okay, I see what we're getting into. And it was gorgeous. It was a gorgeously shot movie. It, you could tell that there was a lot of time and effort that went into making this movie. You really get the feel that they took the time to flesh this thing out, and I can appreciate that. And at the end, I would say I was really looking for... I'm really looking forward to a part two if they make one. I mean, by the end of this film, I was hoping for more. And don't get me wrong, the film goes way over two hours, but I was still looking for a little bit more. And not in a bad way. Hopefully enough people will be into it that we can get a part two out of this, maybe, who knows? That's just wishful thinking on my part. If I had to say I had a problem with anyone in this film, it was definitely the character of Sullivan played by Richard Armitage. With the character of Sullivan, I really didn't get what they were going for with him. Uh, throughout the film, you would see those slight hints of him I want to say becoming or doing something and it never really got to an end point I mean even at the end we never really got much of a payoff as to what was going on personally I didn't know what was happening with him and his ideology was kind of lost in translation a bit I, I would even go as far as to say I wouldn't say stupid but it just made no sense the what he was doing made no sense. The way he was going about it made no sense. It was almost like he was a villain for the sake of the story needing a villain. The space sweepers themselves, which the ship the victory and his crew are part of, are pretty much made up of misfits and I wouldn't even say misfits, I would just say regular average people trying to get by, make a living by scrounging and rounding up scrap throughout the gap. I can't even say throughout the galaxy. That's another thing. This movie pretty much takes place right on the outskirts of planet Earth. It's like all kind of satellites and stations and everything set up right around the orbit of Earth. So this movie's pretty boxed in around this little area of space. So it doesn't go deep out there. It, it paints a good enough picture to make you get lost in that world. You know, you, you still get lost in it. You still for, you forget that it's not out in the middle of nowhere. That it's right there around the planet itself because of how good the storytelling and the cinematography is. With the space sweepers, they have like their own little community and network that they all thrive and survive in. And even they get a story. I can even see how this could continue with not even the victory and his crew, but maybe another ship and his crew involved in the space sweepers. You can tell stories from their point of view or their adventures, or we can just stick with the original victory crew and go on more adventures. So I could definitely see almost a space sweeper world evolving from this movie which would be awesome, I think. We could use a few more space episodic adventures. I mean, Star Wars and Disney pretty much has a lock on it, but I guess Star Trek getting theirs in every once in a while. And I did like Another Life with Katie Sackhoff, but for some reason people hate it. I don't understand why. It's getting horrible reviews. And when I say space episodic, I mean a group of stories extending out from this one world. You know, like I was saying, multiple stories from different points of views and different characters, but still in this same world. That's how that's how rich I feel like this world is, or, or could be. The potential for it is definitely there. All right, so overall, I very much enjoyed this film. It was a pleasant surprise on a Saturday night. If you're looking for a good sci-fi flick with a big-time blockbuster feel to it, I would definitely recommend Space Sweepers. I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Well, that about does it for this review, guys. And as always, thanks for stopping by and checking me out. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button. I have some links posted to some previous videos I've done, as well as some more coming in the future, so hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.